Good morning. morning. Welcome to St. Edward's Episcopal Church on this 24th Sunday after Pentecost. We are thankful that you are here as we worship and celebrate our Lord Jesus Christ. Our worship continues with the Holy Eucharist, Rite 1, found on page 323 in the Book of Common Prayer, page 323. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us, for Thou only art holy. Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world, that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life. Grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of Amos. Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light. As if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. It is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light and gloom with no brightness in it. I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an overflowing stream. The word of the Lord. The psalm for today is Psalm 70, found on page 682 of your prayer book or on the screens above. Let's read it responsively by hat verse, ending with the refrain. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. Let those who seek my life be ashamed and altogether dismayed. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune, and all that can be disgraced. 
Let those who say to me, aha, and gloat over me, turn back. Because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. But as for me, I am poor and needy. You are my helper and my deliverer. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with the cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with it, but the wise took flask of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. While they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. Those who were ready went with him into the wedding bank, and the door was shut. Later, other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know neither the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. This is Veterans Day weekend, a time when we honor all those who have served in the military. And because of that, I was reminded of a famous saying that comes from the military during during the time of war. It is believed to have originated back in World War I, although we don't really know sure exactly where it comes from, and that's this phrase, there are no atheists in foxholes. You've probably heard that. It is also credited to U.S. military chaplain William Thomas Cummings, who may have said it in a field sermon during the Battle of Bataan in 1942. It was made more famous in a speech by President Dwight D. Eisenhower in a broadcast from the White House in 1954. 
But the question is, is the statement true? On the one hand, those that have Christian leanings certainly have become more prayerful in those moments of trauma. Studies have shown that people who have had religious experiences during the horrors of war are 50% more likely to continue to be in church even 50 years later. Their anxiety and fear were less because of prayer in the time of trauma. However, those that claim to be atheists also showed signs of less anxiety and fear, which is kind of interesting. So what do we make of this? Devout Christians who are sincere and devout atheists who are sincere are both people who know what they believe. They believe what they believe. People who are confident in their beliefs handle crisis and fear better than those that are unsure, wishy-washy, or mixed up. Confidence in what one believes in the midst of trauma, such as war, makes a difference. What does this mean for us? We should be confident in what we believe. We should be sure of it. It reminds me of what the apostle told the Philippian church, for I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work among you will complete it by the day of Christ Jesus. And this is one of the many reasons we gather together for church each Sunday morning, to gain confidence in what we believe, to be reminded of the truth of Jesus Christ. We are encouraged as we gather together to worship the Lord through our, through our liturgy, through the reading of scripture, through the singing of songs, through our prayers, through the sacraments. We are built up in the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We affirm each week our faith, our belief, with the words of the Nicene Creed. We take those words to heart and mind. And last week, we, we talked briefly about what a collect is, this, this little short prayer that we say on Sundays and other times during the week, of which we have a different one each Sunday. Our collect today is also spot on with what we believe, as it's not only just a prayer, it's also something that forms us. The collect today was... O God, whose blessed Son came into the world, that he might destroy the works of the devil, and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom. See, this is what we believe. We believe that God sent his son to destroy the works of the devil. We believe that through Jesus we become the children of God, which makes us heirs of eternal life. We also believe that Christ is coming again with power and glory. And that is our hope. Christ is coming again. And we will be raised with him. This is pointing to our, our future resurrection. After we die... Believers in Jesus Christ will be raised to life at the coming of our Lord. And there's that key phrase in our collect. When he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> St. Paul is saying the same thing in our second reading today. He encourages the Thessalonian believers to be ready for the coming of Christ, to be certain of what we believe. He writes this, For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus God will bring with him those who have died. The Lord himself with a cry of command, with the archangel's call and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. And this is our hope. This is our belief. And we take great comfort, strength, and encouragement in this living hope. And this theme of the second coming 
of Jesus and our resurrection from the dead with him is one of the great themes of First and Second Thessalonians. St. Paul spends a great deal of space in these letters on the second coming of Jesus, primarily because the church was confused. Now, perhaps the church was confused because of their own ignorance, just not being informed, or more likely because of the message of the false teachers that St. Paul mentions earlier in the letter. The church thought that perhaps Jesus Christ had already returned, and very unfortunately, they were all left, that they missed the boat. The Thessalonians were concerned, and so St. Paul writes to them about this. Now, please don't misunderstand me as though we are talking about a a, uh, a belief in the rapture where a bunch of people go missing and then the whole world goes into to chaos. That's, that's Christian science fiction made popular by the Left Behind series of books and movies. That's not biblical teaching. What we see here in the church at Thessalonica is a lack of confidence in what they believed about Christ's return, which is why St. Paul writes to them concerning this. He wants them to be confident. He wants them to be sure of what they believe. When Christ Jesus comes back, everyone will know. It is not some secret or hidden knowledge that some people will know. The dead in Christ will rise from the dead. And those believers who are alive will rise in the air to meet with Christ and will be with the Lord forever. The image here is not so much that Jesus comes back, and we meet him in the air, and then he takes us off somewhere that we call heaven. That's not really what the scripture says. The image is of a great king and warrior returning from battle. And that's why there's a a trumpet, a, a cry of command. There's certain keys here about what's being said. And when a great king returns from victory from a war, the people run out to meet the king and all the soldiers, the angels, if you will, celebrating, excitement, victory has been won, and they ushered the great warrior, the great king, back to his homeland. You see, when Jesus returns, it's a time of celebration for those that believe. It is the consummation of our victory in Christ, just like our colleague said, that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life. And he did destroy the works of the devil on the cross. And because of his grace, through faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are made his children and receive eternal life. The second coming celebrates this victory. Again, our call it today, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom. Or as St. Paul said it in our reading, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Christ Jesus will return to consummate his kingdom, a new heaven and a new earth, a redeemed creation. And I don't know about you, but this is full of hope. This is why we are pilgrims passing through. We are sojourners, exiles, all these biblical words describing the journey of a Christian. We await the coming of Jesus, proclaiming the good news of the gospel, living in the kingdom of God with kingdom principles as the children of God, here and now. And this is why we care for justice in our society. This is why we work toward the care of creation. This is why we speak up for the poor and oppressed. This is why we pray and share the good news of the kingdom of God because our king is coming back and we are preparing the way for Jesus to come. And this hope is how we encourage each other. The last words in our reading today from St. Paul and Thessalonians were this, therefore encourage one another with these words. So be encouraged. Whatever is going on in your life right now, it's not the final word. Whatever is going on in our nation, in our world, in our culture, in our politics, it's not the final word. The final word is Jesus is coming back. And it is Jesus who said, Behold, I make 
all things new. And he also said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Trustworthy and true. May we be confident of this. This is our belief. As the words of our creed says, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Breathe that in. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all mankind, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with a spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Justin, our bishop, for bishops Dorsey and Jay, for priests Father Mark, for deacons Mickey, Bob, and Kim, and for all of our clergy, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And from our Anglican cycle of prayer, we especially pray for all saints' church in Lakeland, in Christ the King Church in Lakeland. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with me card and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and in righteousness all the days of their life. And on this Sunday, we especially pray for parish members, Bill, Kim, Lily, Colton and Chloe Zears. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph, our president, and Ronald, our governor, and for all those serving in any capacity for our nation throughout the world, and especially for our armed forces who serve to keep us free, and particularly those with ties to our parish family. We pray for TJ, Ian, Matt, 
William, Nicholas, Victor, Bradley, Zach, Kyle, Elizabeth, Robert, Colin, Zachary, Kent, Craig, Emma, Mary, Laura, Trevor, Steve, Christian, Clay, and Brandon. So we pray for all who serve that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and the peace of the world. And at this time, we also have a prayer for peace and especially for the Ukraine and the Middle East. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love, so mightily is spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory, now and forever. Amen. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people, behold thy gracious hand in all their works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation they may honor thee with their substance, and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And Father, we especially pray for blessings upon anyone who works in any outreach ministries from St. Edward's. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those from whom our prayers have been requested, especially Margaret, Jack, John, Carol, Kurt, Peter, Doreen, Joe, Connie, Dick, Anne, Cindy, Roger, Jennifer, and for all those we name from our hearts, And all those who in this transitory life who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And Father, we give you thanks and praise for all the blessings of this life he has bestowed upon us. Especially for the birthdays of Mary Lou, Nancy, Ruth, Sandy, and Barbara. And the wedding anniversaries of Carol and Roseanne. And we also bless the holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and thy fear. For Caroline, Flo, Faye, Father Al, Anthony, Lavon, Buddy, Oren, and Charles. And for all who died in service to our country and in service to the church. Beseech in thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good example of St. Edward and all our saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, the remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. 
Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, good morning again. It's good to see all of you on this Sunday morning. We had a rummage sale this weekend. And that's all I have. No, I'm no, I'm just (laughs) no. (laughs) We had a rummage sale this weekend and they were able to uh, raise two thousand four hundred dollars off all those wonderful things. So um, praise be to God for that. That was terrific. Thank you for um, all that served and helped and also for that donated different items and so forth. We really appreciate all that you do. This is also uh, Veterans Day week, and as yesterday was Veterans Day, and we'd love to recognize our veterans today. You have to stay standing. If you are a veteran, uh, please do stand if you're able to, that we can just recognize and th- give thanks for your service. Thank you. The, uh, a few other things that are coming up. Dinner and more will be held on Tuesday, November 14th. That's this coming Tuesday um, at 6 o'clock. Please bring a, a dish to share if you're able to, and we'll enjoy a potluck together. And then at 6.30, Father Andrew Lazo will be speaking on C.S. Lewis and patriotism. And uh, so I invite you to be a part of that. There's a burial service this Saturday uh, for Bob Shoemaker, a longtime parishioner. Um, and that is this Saturday, November 18th at 11 a.m. All are invited to come. There will be a reception to follow in Hartridge Hall. Also coming up, Thanksgiving Day is November 23rd. Um, there's five Thursdays in November this year. Which one is Thanksgiving on? The fourth one. Sometimes that gets people. But uh, November 23rd, uh, we do have a Holy Eucharist uh, celebrated at 9 a.m. on that day. Now, I know for a lot of us, that's a kind of, I mean, if you're having family come in here, cooking a big meal and all of that, um, it can be a very busy, busy day. 
But if you're able to, I can think of no better way to start a national day of giving thanks than coming to church and giving thanks to God. So if you are able to do that, I encourage you to do that as we will gather together at 9 a.m. that morning. There's a Christmas tree in the back, and it's not even Advent. The reason is because that's our angel tree uh, outreach, and uh, the, the angels from the Children's Advocacy Center in Leesburg, each, <coughs> excuse me, each angel has a wish list attached, provided by each child, and what you can do is take one of those angels that has a, some ideas on there, uh, make, make sure to sign the little paper that's back there so we know who has what angel, and then... Uh, and then you go and you can purchase those items and then please bring them back by Monday, December 6th or earlier to the office or into the uh, in here um, with the angel on there so we know what it is and who it's for. <clears throat> now, just to, just to clarify something, because this is sometimes by a little bit of confusion, um, you can use the list that's on the angel as a guide. The expectation is not that you buy the entire list of things. Okay, um, there, there could be times when there's a, a brother and a sister, and of course we don't know who's who. The advocacy center will make sure they get a fair amount of gifts. All right, so it's not like the daughter's going to get a bunch of things and the boy gets a couple things. All right, um, so if there's a connection that way, they'll take care of that. Um, it's just a way of us helping in for the season with with those um, kids that are in those situations. Um, the uh, if you get a list. And you're like, I don't know what is, these things are. <laughs> um, ask one of the youth at 10 o'clock. No, <laughs> you can do that. Um, or, uh, or you can call the church office and we'll do our best to try to figure out what it is too. If there's something on there that you want and you're just not sure. Or if you have grandkids, you can ask them too. Maybe they know. Um, but I encourage you to do that. It's a way to, to give to kids in our community. Um, <clears throat> just two other things. Um, just a reminder that if you haven't turned in your, your stewardship card, your pledge card for next year, uh, please do so as soon as you can. That way, we, as we begin to finalize the budget over the next few weeks, uh, we can get that done. The, uh, and also, over here, many of you are familiar with these. <coughs> in this basket are pocket prayer shawls and there's a there's about a hundred of these in here and they say this place in your hand this symbol of hope a pocket prayer shawl a little hug from God to carry you through the day may the presence of someone praying for you bringing you comforting hope peace and a safe harbor found in each prayerful stitch created especially for you so these, I'm going to bless them in just a second. These will be in the narthex. Take one or two on your way out if you have someone in mind. And just give this to them and say, hey, you're not alone in this. Or I'm praying for you. Or something that would bring encouragement. We talked about in the sermon today that we are the people of hope. We, we believe that Christ is going to make all things new. Not everybody has that hope. So may we bring that hope in this world. And this is one simple way of doing that, to encourage people. Um, so if you'd like to, take a few of these, and especially this season, right? Um, as we get closer to the holidays, it's a tough time for a lot of people. So use this as a way of ministering to others. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for all these pocket prayer shawls, Lord, and the, this ministry that we've done for a few years now. And Father, I pray that each one of these, as they are given to different folks, whether they're mailed to them or given in person, but Father, that these will bring your hope into people's lives through the power of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord God, that you are our Savior, and we pray that these will bring ministry to others. And I bless them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Are there any birthdays today or this week? We've got a whole row of birthdays back there, it looks like. <laughs> Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. 
Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessings. Blessings. Happy birthday. <laughs> Are there any wedding anniversaries today or this week? Are there any travelers? Leah's traveling. Is Tom coming up behind me too? No. Okay. No. no. All right. No, <laughs> All right. Um, where are you traveling to? Jacksonville. Jacksonville. All right. Let us pray. O oh God, our heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessings, safe travels. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and a sacrifice to God. Please stand. Worship continues with Holy Eucharist Prayer 1, found on page 333 in the Book of Common Prayer, page 333. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, in our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord. Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, who by water and the Holy Spirit hast made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth thy glory in all the world. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name 
evermore praising Thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of Thy glory. Glory be to Thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel as you are able. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we, and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion, may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, Yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. 
O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. If you would like to receive prayers of healing for yourself or for someone you know, please come forward at this time.
in the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we all share one bread and one cup. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen.